Hello and welcome back to EVE Online and today we're in another Tech One Destroyer and in the name of diversity and equality it's the Mimitar Destroyer, the Thrasher. It uses small projectile turrets as its weapon system, it gets a bonus on the damage and it's the only Tech One Destroyer that does. The whole fit costs about two and a half million. In the top slots we've got 200mm light carbine repeating cannons, they're quite cheap. Uh, they give us a range of about 6,800 meters maximum and 175 DPS, and that's with the short range ammo, which we'll look at in a little while. We've got the restrained microwalk drive to reduce the signature radius bloom. We've got the shield extender one, the medium shield extender one, to increase the amount of shield. We've got, we've got the weather fire to slow down the targets. In the bottom slots, I've just gone straight for two DPS upgrades in the form of two of the compact driver stabilizers and then in the rig slots just to keep the fit cheap we've just got the field extender which gives us more shield and the thermal screen reinforcer which gives us more thermal resistance there we've got the em hole but we're here this is the build that i've shown you with the other races to go in and get the serpentis rats so this is a, a serpentis pve fit and I brought along some standard ammo and a little bit of faction ammo just in case we need the extra DPS. But we'll see that when we're actually testing it out in the field. So this is the start off straight out the box fit. The intention is to upgrade it as we go along. At this stage, the hull is the most expensive part of the fit. Um, that will change over time, no doubt. So this is just to get us going. Low skills required, as long as it's enough to get into uh, the point four and point three low sex systems and kill some of those big rats the job is done i've already been out to be honest because i've downgraded the fit in this fit here now the fit we've used there is 175 dps the cheaper fit 2.5 million i've got a fit here that costs seven and a half million it puts the dps up quite nicely as we'll see in a minute when i sort out the ammo but basically what we've done here and we'll be using this in in most of the video we've added on the collision accelerator to up the dps we put on better guns that gives us slightly better dps because of rate of fire and damage bonuses we've got the tech 2 shield extender on and the tech 2 gyro stabilizers and when we do sort the ammo out and when you look you go onto here on the charges tab on the fitting screen click on the gun phased plasma is the best to use against serpentis just the standard ammo is 224 dps so that's uh what 50 dps increase if we overheat we're up to 257 and uh, if we put in the faction ammo i don't think i'm doing that demonstration we'll get even more dps so the idea is to start basic and upgrade that's always the best plan as far as i'm concerned now i've not used minmatar ships too much at all in my eve career and one of the most um confusing things to get your head around when you're first starting is the ammo so if we go onto the fitting screen the charges tab and then click on the gun that we've got fitted it gives us give us all the ammo that will possibly fit in that gun we'll ignore the faction stuff for now but i've gone for the phase plasma as i said to hit the serpentis now as you see we're getting 10 thermal damage and 2 kinetic damage with a minus 50 percent range penalty so that's the up close bang ammo depleted uranium we get free thermal, two kinetic, and free explosive damage. Uh, we get no range modifier, and we get a small tracking speed multiplier. So uh, it will apply a little bit better. So that's why I've got some depleted uranium ammo, I think, in case we want to engage things at slightly longer range. If you go through the rest of the ammo types, depleted, uh, sorry, titanium sabo we've got here. So that's going to do six kinetic and two thermal. That actually might be better. I don't know. Six kinetic against the Serpentis may be a better option because this again has no range modifier. I'll experiment. I'm not going to get into the deep maths of which is the most effective ammo. You've got the photon there, does some EM damage and some kinetic. It gets a 60% uh, additional range bonus. So it's very long range ammo, but obviously the DPS now is going to be considerably lower than the short range stuff. So uh, go through the different ammo types see what's appropriate to the rats that you're going to be fighting when you're doing pve or if you're out for pvp then you're going to know what kind of ammo you want to choose want to use might depend on your target might just be on a doctrine 
but uh, that's how the Mimitar ammo selection works. Just flick through them all on this screen here. It's probably the easiest way to look at it all and decide what's most appropriate for your enemies and for your tactic. So I've taken the cheap fit straight out into my friendly neighborhood 0.3 system, uh, Anne, and we found a clone soldier recruiter pretty much straight away. So um, you may be familiar with the tactics here from the other videos, but the idea is we need to close range very quickly. These clone soldiers will hit very hard. As you can see, the damage is incoming. I've clicked up and to the left of where the clone soldier is just to turn the ship so we get a bit of traversal across him so we're not flying head on into his fire and we just leave the micro warp drive burning till we get in there we need to set ourselves a nice close orbit the optimal range of our guns is about 900 but um we're not going to be able to stay that close for too often projectile turrets lose damage on their fall off range area less than some of the other weapon systems so uh falling out of optimal isn't that as bad as it could be with some other weapon systems but now we've got him web we've got the fire going we're in our orbit nice and tight he can't now apply any more damage to us i've got friends in system so uh today so i'm not being too uh, secure on the d scan obviously when you're out and about you want to be d scanning constantly or there are people in local you want to have an exit strategy already kind of in your head what are you going to walk to if you need to run uh, and if you've spent any time in the system you might have wanted to set yourself up a safe spot as i've shown you in many other videos anyway we are going through slowly the armor of this clone soldier you can see him repping he's got quite a nice rep going on as long as we can keep applying the dps we've got a huge uh, amount of ammo in the guns we're not never gonna have to reload hopefully when we're hitting the same rat I'm not going to overheat the guns or anything at this stage. I want a base kind of level uh, idea of where we are with this fit. And uh, if it can take down this clone soldier, then uh, it's good to go. And this guy, this rat, should be worth about 5 million altogether with his bounty and his loot. And that's 5 million we can then exactly spend switching our thrasher from the first fit I showed you to the second. Uh, which is then going to give you a little bit more hit points. It's going to give you more DPS. And basically upgrading your fit means you can kill things quicker. Um, it's all well and good. I mean, this is the fit that I, as hopefully we're going to see here, is going to kill this clone soldier and get his 5 million loot and uh, bounty. But the quicker you can do it, obviously the better, in the sense that you're on grid for less time and in low sec, therefore a little bit less huntable. And just in general, even if you're out in high sec doing sights or just ratting, whatever you're doing, the quicker you can do it and move on and do some more, obviously that puts up your income in terms of ISK per hour, if that's how you play the game. So um, yeah, upgrading your fit is always a good idea. I like to just show you the most basic fit you can use. A lot of people in game will show you very high level fits. If they give you a fit like that, don't just go, oh my god, um, I haven't got the skills or I haven't got the ISK. Uh, you can downgrade to what you can fit of that ver uh, of a version of the module. Um, I am going to make a kind of detailed pitting video quite soon. I've been promising it for a while and I need to get around to it. Now they've updated the fitting screen slightly. It's appropriate. So there you go. We've got one and a quarter million bounty. It just showed us in the middle. And then we've got his tag. That's two and a half. So we've got four million out of that rat. So um, that's not bad going. So we're going to spend that upgrading our Thrasher and get back out in the updated version. And here we are. I'm back in Anne. We've got the system to ourselves now. We found a Shadow Serpentis battle cruiser on one of the belts. And as I've said before, you always want to kill the Shadow Serpentis no matter where you see them. Quite often they'll drop um, quite crap faction loot. It'll be some ammo. Um, they drop a, the Serpentis ones drop a lot of kinetic armor hardeners which are not worth much money at all but they'll all, always drop some kind of faction loot and sometimes it is quite good so i'm literally just going to go in and blitz this guy you can see i'm taking a quite a bit of damage in off the four frigates that are escorting this guy um, i have got the upgraded shield extender on there now but anyway let's see what we've got from this guy and ta-da it's 156 million that's a very good drop from a belt rat, isn't it? 
and that was a Shadow Serpentis magnetic field stabilizer worth about 90 million and an assault damage control worth about 60. Fantastic. And uh, Shadow Serpentis do spawn out in high sec. So uh, if you keep killing all the rats in the system on the belts, then they will escalate. I'm back into Anne. I'm checking who this guy is in local. He doesn't look too scary. I've found a battleship. So I'm going to go in and try out me uh, fit on the battleships. They do take a while to take down. They're very tanky. They're generally worth about a million each in the bounties and the loot. It can be more. And in lower security, low sec systems, the bounties can get higher. But um, they take a little while to take down, but it's a good test of your tank. Now, if you're going to be going round and round systems and you want to keep getting the battleships, a little tip is to not kill the two frigates that are with him as his escort. Um, the game seems more likely then to spawn in a new battleship to go with the escort rather than just a random spawn. Right, I've cut, cut about two minutes out of us going round and round this battleship. So as I said, yeah, it did take a while to kill. Um, but they're here to be killed, so why not? It's not something you'd want to linger around doing necessarily if bit local was busy and there was stuff on your D-scan. Um, they're very good for clearing your security status. If you spend a bit of time in low second, you're quite aggressive. Sooner or later, you'll end up with a negative security status. One way of tidying it up is to rat out the battleships and the clones. And uh, in that case, it is worth farming them by just killing the battleships and leaving the escorts. So we've got the bounty payment, 650,000. I'm just dropping a little bit of intel into the corp chat because I'm in this corp because I, I needed it really for uh, the access to that wormhole station I've been borrowing. Nothing much going on with these scan. He's in an Okata. There's an Okata. I'm safe. Let's see what the loot is floating around here. Not much in this one. So all told, about 900,000. I'm just going to grab what I want because I don't want to fill my uh, cargo hold up with big drones that are no real use to me. On with the show. Okay, so I've now ventured off into a pocket of 0 0.2, 0 0.1 space. I've been around a few belts and I can't find any clones, but I have spotted a frigate on my D-scan. Around here somewhere, I'm looking for him. There you go, a Federation Navy Comet. Uh, now, is that worth having a fight with? Let's go and have a look, shall we? Now, uh, you might want to get a bit of intel on the other pilot in local before you commit to perhaps landing on an asteroid belt with him, but that's not my style necessarily, um, especially when I'm having some fun in low second uh, thrasher. So, are we going to land with him? No, he's not on this belt. But I do know from my last D-scan results that if he's not here on belt one, he's on belt two. I'm pretty much sure that's got to be the case. He's still around. Yeah, come on. We'll just go over to belt two and get into a fight, maybe. So, uh, yeah, let's have a look at who this guy is. I'm quickly going to open up the kill board whilst I'm warping into the belt he's on. Checking his name. Quickly bash some typing into there. He's got quite an unusual name, so it comes up nice and quickly. Right, there he is. He's on grid. His kill board's all red. That's all losses. So go, go, go. We're just going to charge this guy. Now, he's in a Federation Navy Comet. Might well be Kite Rail Fit. It could be Blaster Fit. He's got some drones out too. I'm not going to worry about them. He's actually disrupted me there, which makes me think he's going to be a Kite Fit. So I'm just going to go to try to get in as close as I can. Get the web on him, get the guns on him and start shooting. He's coming in quite close. I'm surprised. I thought he was going to be rails, but he's coming in towards me now. I'm just going to fly straight back at him and burn with the micro warp drive. If it didn't fire, <laughs> I meant to burn in with the micro warp drive. There we go. That will slingshot me past him uh, through my optimal and I've got the kill. That's quite good. And uh, I think I took him a little bit by surprise there. We'll loot what's left in his wreck. Thank you very much. That might come in handy for another fit on another ship. We're going to warp off the belt now just to get out of the way. And there you see down there what? <laughs> uh, yeah, I didn't think, uh, I don't think he expected me to turn around and bite him quite that hard. A little bit surprised by his fit. Let's have a look. It's 22 millions worth. He's got blasters. 
I'm surprised. I'm, I thought he would try and kite me when he put the disruptor on me. Ah, right, now we're in another point two system here. I found what is a, basically a Serpentis mining hauling fleet. And they do appear quite often, well, reasonably often. Uh, there's couriers, there's ferriers, and there's loaders. Now, I've killed one of the loaders. And that dropped some pyrite, as you saw. I'm now on one of the couriers. Let's see what this guy's got. These are the ones that I think are the ones you want to focus on if they're around. These can spawn in high sec. I've killed these out in Metzorel, which is 0.7. We're going to get in, see what loot's in that ship. What have we got? What have we got? What have we got? We've got some more pyrite. That's not what we're after. Right, <laughs> we'll go after the last courier. Bit of damage coming in, but not something we need to worry about. We've got the system to ourselves. No one's going to jump on us. We're going to take down this uh, cruiser here as we go past him. But no, he's out of range now, so we'll get on the courier. Focus. Still not shooting at him. See, I've got the luxury of being alone in local, and now you can see me flopping around like a fool. So, let's take down this courier. They go down nice and quickly. And uh, see what it contains inside. But I'm very impressed with this ship. I've never really used Mimitar ships. Certainly not any of the smaller ones really very much. And I'm really liking the Frasher. I've also been out in a Coercer with the Galante uh, Alpha. Because that translates over quite nicely because uh, of the sh uh, armor skills etc. So let's see what we've got in this courier. I'm also going to do a video looking, of course, at the destroyers that don't use guns. We've got some missile destroyers and some drone destroyers. All right, come on, let's get to this wreck. <laughs> I want the loot. But do remember, when you're in low sec, any belt rack could potentially... Oh, we got an Alara restrained upgraded 21 million mining laser upgrade, and I've swung out of range to grab it. Um, yeah, as I was saying, any belt rack could drop a, you know, a good Serpentis tag that might be worth 16, 17 million. A lot of the frigates and destroyers, they drop um, the warp disruption field generators. They're pink modules. They're easy to spot. They're worth at least a million each. Or if you're an industrialist, you might want to scrap them because they're actually worth more than that if you uh, scrap them down to their parts if you've got a good reprocessing skill. Okay, and we've landed on a belt here. We're trying to get away, but there's a Tengu. Um, he's actually, he's not a Tengu, he's a Proteus, forgive me. He killed me in a Tengu previously, I think, this guy. This is the second time he's killed me while I'm in here ratting. And uh, it's going to happen. But I've always taken the loot away. I'm going to put up a little bit of a fight that I can, just because that's what I'm here for. And I do a little bit of damage to his shield, but he's armor tank, so that's pretty irrelevant. I could have maybe tried to burn out of his disruptor range. I don't think it would have worked. The fact that I've always dropped off my loot means I've never lost, um, you know, a very bad loss on these ratting destroyers. Once I've got a multiple of the value of the ship in the hold, I definitely go and put the loot away. There are stations around. Just drop it off, even if you have to go come back when it's quieter to pick it up and get it out. So he's killed me. By looking at his fit on the kill board, I figured out that my uh, Frasher is worth about 0.8% of the value of his Proteus. So there you go. No shame in losing to him. And as usual, of course, if you check in that clip, the clone soldier was hitting me too. Anyway, why are faction modules so expensive? If you look at the stats here, there's really not much in it. Um, the 96 million Shadow Serpentis Magnetic Field Stabilizer gives a 0 0.02 better damage bonus than the Magnetic Field Stabilizer Tech 2 does <laughs> and is slightly easier to fit. Uh, so yeah, just have a look at the stats there and uh, that's all you're paying for, those last couple of percent or a little bit more DPS. And now look, this is another random belt drop this was a shadow serpentis frigate 344 million drop it's that mid-grade aslepian uh implant that is doing the job the amiga one there i'm going to show off to my friends very quickly um a random drop they're here i've come out of our wormhole out to check out the low st sec static system just landed on a couple of belts did a little bit of ratting through um, found nothing juicy then there's a shadow serpentis frigate on the belt and there you go made my day 
and if you get out and about these things all happen well anyway i hope you've enjoyed this video i hope it's been useful and entertaining take care fly safe leave us a like leave us a comment subscribe if you want to and goodbye